Welcome to this Excel VBA tip where I'll show you how to quickly get more information about your code or just actually figure out what code you need to use to do something. And specifically, this will deal with figuring out an object's methods and properties and the values to use for them. But don't let those terms scare you off. The tools that I'm going to show you here will allow you to more easily make your macros. And that's what's important. And this is a small part of a much larger course I have on teachexcel.com. So if you're interested in learning more about VBA and macros, there's a link to it in the description of this video, and you should check it out. Now the task for this tutorial is to make a cell bold. That's all. I want to make range A1 bold. And let's say that I remember how to reference range A1. You just do it like that. But now what do I do? Because when I type period, remember that's going to give you a list of all the things that you can do. All of the methods and all of the properties that you can access for this object. And I just want to make it bold. So I start typing bold. There is no bold. What do I do? All right, so let's figure out how to make this guy bold. And the very first tip here is to use the macro recorder. It is a lifesaver, especially with things like formatting. So we're going to split the screen like this, and it's a great thing you can do with a macro recorder so you can see the code being built as you do stuff in the worksheet. Then just go over here to your worksheet, and let's go to the View tab and Macros and record macro. Hit OK, we don't care what the name is. We will get a new module, so double click it. And let's go over here to the Home tab, Font, and watch what happens when I click Bold now. Selection.font.bold equals true. So it gives us the code right there. All right, that's how I turn it on. Now, how do I turn it off? Bold once again, that's how we turn it off. Now we have the code we need. So let's go back to the View tab and Macros and Stop Recording. It's easier to go to the bottom left of the screen, by the way. But either way, just click Stop Recording. And let's make the code window bigger again and take the relevant bits of code from this over here because we know how to make the range reference. Selection is simply a range reference. All we need is this guy right here. So we copy it, go back over here, range A1, paste it in. Now we can make range A1 bold. That is perfect. I love it. That is one of my favorite tips for especially formatting, because there's just too many things to remember when it comes to formatting options for cells. Now let's go with the next tip. This is a great one. Let's say that we remember it's this. We type dot font. All right, then dot, OK, bold. So the IntelliSense menu here is going to kind of help you figure it out. If you remember that it's font after the range reference, then it's very easy to see it's bold next up. So let's do that. OK, great, bold. But now that we have this, what do we do? Maybe we try and type a period, see if we get another menu. Nope. All right, how about an equal sign? Nope, nothing. OK. So how do I figure out what to put there? Well, if you don't want to use the macro recorder, or if it doesn't give you good results, it doesn't always give good results, what we can do is right-click the thing about which you want to find more information. In this case, it is bold. And go down here to Definition. This is going to open up a crazy-looking window. It's the Object Browser, and it allows you to get more information about objects. A range is an object. A worksheet's an object. And so are so many other things over here. It gives us more information about whatever we right-clicked on in the other window. So you see that bold is highlighted now. And when we go down here, we're going to get more information about it. Property bold as variant. Member of Excel font. OK. But that's still not terrifically helpful. Now, sometimes it is very helpful in this window. Sometimes it's not. And in this case, it hasn't helped us figure out what to put in there for bold. So let's go back up to bold and right-click it, go to Help. And this takes us to Microsoft's own documentation for the bold property. So here we can see font.bold, just like we typed in the VBA window a moment ago. And at the top, it tells you a little bit about it. True if the font is bold. Read, write, variant. Sometimes this description is great, sometimes it's not so great. But what you always hope for and what really helps you out is when you get an example. 
a nice working piece of code. And sometimes these examples are pretty big and pretty helpful. Sometimes they can actually be wrong. But this gives you a lot more information than just the little object browser or the VBA window that we were in a moment ago. And to close this window, you go to the second X up here, not the X for the whole window, this one right here. One more tip, which is Control I. Control I is great for giving you a little bit more information. So I click this now. I don't get any additional information about it. I hit Control I. I can see more information, bold as variant. Same thing for font. And same thing for the range object right here. I can see that it is a range object and I can see the arguments for it, what I can put inside of it. Once again, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. It's really helpful for variables, by the way. So if I type my variable as, let's say, well, let's make it a worksheet this time, or workbook, and then I'm typing my variable down here, and I have it used in some code, but I don't remember what it is. Now you'd give it a better name, but let's say you still want information about it. Control I, local variable, so I can see the scope right there, then my variable, the name of it, as workbook. And that is control I. And that rounds out this tutorial. And remember, if you'd like to learn more about VBA and macros, there's a link in the description of this video to my full course on teachexcel.com. And there you will learn so much more.